so here we are. I am attempting to do another video for you here. Uh, this reflector thing. I have a funny, uh, <laughs> uh, just a second ago, it, I put the code in the iPad and uh, in the uh, the MacBook Pro instead of in the iPad, and so it just went like this downward spiral of death. I'll, uh, I'll, I, I, well, I'll show you a picture another time. <clears throat> Anyways, so this video, I wanted to do uh, just a little breakdown of the idea of sorting versus selling, and the reason I'm recording this, I'm going to put it on the page where you can see all the stuff about the introvert selling system. And also I might run this as a retargeting ad or something, but, um, but the, <clears throat> the ultimate idea is uh, when I worked at Bear Stearns years and years ago, um, the uh, like, it, you know, the, the idea was that you talk to tons and tons of people. Like we had to make a hundred contacts a day which took about a thousand dials a day, which meant I used two phones at the same time, did a thing called double dialing, which was this, you know, like it was a lot of work. And, um, but one of the things that I learned from it back then was that, um, you know, there were, there were guys in the office who, who were brokers who were already, I was in the, like, I was a junior broker. I was in the training program, but, um, um, the guys who had been around a long time, uh, they had a, a lead box of their cards and I wish I still had it. Um, <clears throat> um, so we would put the leads after we would talk to them on a five by seven, um, index card and we'd have what we talked to them about and all this stuff. And there were guys who had this box of cards that they had had for the longest time for years. Right. And, um, and they would just, uh, you know, it's like they would, they held these leads like they were gold and, and they kept talking to the same people over and over. Um, not all the time, but like whenever they were feeling motivated to call and try to open a new account, they, they open up their lead box and they would like start calling and talk to a couple of these guys that they've already talked to 10, 15, 20 times. Right. And, and they wouldn't open that many accounts. Most of those guys would open like one new account a month, if that, maybe two. And these were guys who were doing well. I mean, you know, they were making five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, but it was because they had done all this work at the beginning and now they weren't doing it. And, um, and the, 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 the point of all that is that I feel like sometimes the challenge with, um, with what happens in, um, our business is that we have such a small amount of lead flow, right? And I mean, I can, I can draw this out. Like when you've got, uh, I think I can draw it. Let's see. Maybe my, is this the right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the pencil died. Um, uh, but when you've got a small amount of lead flow, then what happens is you hang on to those leads and you feel like you got to sell every one. You feel like you got to maximize every single opportunity, right? And and that's where you, you get into this this world of selling. And uh, like like I was talking to somebody yesterday about this. Uh, not talking, but I was Facebook chatting uh, with this guy about this, and he was talking about how you know he runs this webinar, and their cost per application is up about one hundred seventy five dollars uh, per. Uh, app that they're running. And because of that, you know, he feels like they're on really shaky ground because uh, that he like to use his words is still working, but they are nervous about everything. And, uh, and so, you know, what happens is when you're paying that much for an application, then, you know, and say your thing is, I don't know, like five grand, then what you end up with is you end up in a situation where if the person doesn't show on the call or uh, like say your show rate is down to um, like, like get goes down to say 50% or something, then you're paying $350 for a sales call and say your thing costs five grand, then, you know, if you're closing uh, 10, 12, 15% of those calls, then you're spending a good amount of your, sale on 
on uh, on ad spend to 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 just ge generate the sale. And uh, if you know if you run a sales team, you know that like ten percent isn't bad uh, close rate for a sales team, and um, if they're closing cold traffic. And so so anyways, the the long and short of it is that the selling idea with small numbers of leads is really really tough. And if you think about like what, when you when you type in the word selling and uh like in a, in a google search or like i typed in the word sleazy earlier just the word sleazy and the first word that came up as a suggestion was salesman right and so people don't like uh there's a lot of negative connotations to sales and i think it's all because of lack of leads lack of enough volume of leads that are um, uh, economically efficient right for you to be able to do it um so anyways, these are the things that, that I think, you know, start happening when you're selling versus sorting. Uh, you know, obviously you start hard selling people and pushing them to make a decision that maybe they're not as comfortable with, um, which I call selling from the bottom, right? You're, you're selling every single body instead of being able to be selective uh, with who you're going to sell. Um, obviously you end up feeling like a sleazy salesman or a used car salesman because you're pushing people like, like every time I've ever made a mistake selling somebody, it's because I pushed them. It's because I was able to, I, and I can do it. I mean, I could push you. I could, I could, I, you know, it's like, that's part of it is like, if you're good at this, you can push people. And I, like I pushed somebody over the edge. Last time I did it was back in, I think March or, or February. I had this offer that we were running and it was a $30,000 one pay offer. And uh, this girl that I knew um, who had been struggling with the, something that was similar to this, um, you know, I said, Hey, listen, you know, we'll handle this for you. Here's our, this new offer that we're testing and it is 30 K and a one pay. And the deal is, is that was a lot of money for her. And, um, but I knew we could succeed and, and everything, but it was, it was a big push she was not ready, right? She was, she was still, she, she had, um, uh, uh, she had pain, but it wasn't the level of pain where she really wanted to, to, to deal with, you know, professionals at the level that we were going to operate. And so, um, essentially what, you know, she wanted was she essentially wanted this to become that she had me like all the time access to me, like, you know, all this sort of stuff for the 30 K and um, you know, I don't operate like that. I mean, that's just not the thing. So I ended up refunding her 30 grand like two days later because I realized that I had pushed that I had, that I had made a sale that I, you know, the buyer wasn't ready. And so I just pushed that extra little bit. Um, what you end up with in those situations is, is, you know, the wrong buyers, right? So you end up with buyer's remorse, you end up with refunds, chargebacks, and having to resell yourself, resell your value. And those are all challenges that happen when you, when you push for the sale, because the, the main reason that I've found that, that we push is either one of two things. It's either we have, don't have enough leads. And so we feel like we need to, to make this, you know, Thing our deal or we're so enthusiastic about something that we push because we want everybody to be in it but again you've got to, you got to be careful because it um like building your business smart is building your business in a way that doesn't end up uh hamstringing your business because you've got a bunch of wrong fit people in there so um you know like if you think about it like what does a great prospect look like uh, they have a strong need or want. Okay. And I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, they're cooperative and teachable, right? They're ready now. They're willing to pay what you're worth and they're willing to take action and do what you tell them to do. Now this is for information stuff. I mean, if it's do it yourself or if it's uh, done for you service, you know, they're, th these all still apply, but, but you might be the one doing the work for them, but, but they still apply the same way. But <clears throat> if you think about it, this is a little drawing I did. Uh, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to like, um, to draw on this while I was doing this video, but I guess my Apple, Apple pencil died. Um, but 
So you've, you've got in the marketplace here on the left-hand side, you've got the, the percentage of the market that's really struggling, okay? And I don't know if 10% is right, maybe it's 15, whatever it is, but there's a percentage of the market that's really struggling. And then on the other end, you've got the, the percentage that's really succeeding, okay? And there's a, there's a great Dan Kennedy video about this on YouTube somewhere if you dig it out. But he talks about an information business, uh, coaching business, anything like that, that you make your money up on the, the bottom and the top half of the market, or top pieces of the market. And, and what that means is that um, the people in the middle that are, they're comfortable, um, like in his video, he talks about how you'll go broke if you're trying to sell those people. And, and I agree with that. Um, I think that the people in the middle are the hardest people to sell. I think that they have the biggest egos. I think that you have to sell them and push them. And I think ultimately they're bad clients because they always are you know like testing you and pushing you and they want more of you 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 instead of the result right but if you think about it it's like the best clients that you can have are the ones that are at the bottom 10 or 15 percent whatever it is and the ones at the top 10 or 15 percent whatever it is so the the ones at the bottom are desperate and they have the biggest felt need they are in a situation where they know that they are like, <laughs> like they're in trouble and that if they don't get this figured out, they're going to lose everything or, or what have you, right? So they, they, they are very clear about their situation. The biggest question you've got with them is figuring out how to help them pay for your thing, okay? And there's ways to do that. I've got some some cool stuff I can show you at another time. Then on the other end of the spectrum, th so those are the people that need it at the very bottom, right? Then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got the people that want it. And the people that want it are, are like me. I'm a hyper buyer. It's like, if you've got something that I'm interested in, I buy, I, you know, I bought a piece of software called VA flow um, a month, maybe a month ago, maybe two months ago. It's a, it's a project management software that is like 7,500 bucks um, for the, for the, it's a year license, but it's the only way you can buy it's up front. And um, this guy was running ads. I saw it and I thought it was a cool idea. It was like a project management software that had like a flow chart uh, aspect to it. So I liked it. I, I like, he had some process that I was supposed to go through to buy it. And I just sent him a message. I'm like, dude, if you send me the order link, I'll buy it right now. If you don't, then I won't. And uh, so he sent me the link and I bought it. And, um, and it's the reason is because I want the slight edge. I'm the guy who will pay 7,500 bucks for something because it's interesting to me and I think I can learn something from it, right? Um, so, so those are great clients to have because they don't need very much from you and they don't need very much for the value of the thing to, to, to make a big difference in their business, right? The bottom people are great clients too, with an asterisk, if your thing really works, okay? Now, if your thing is bullshit, then they're not great clients. If, if your thing is, um, darn it, I can't believe I said that. That's going to mess up being able to run ads to this. Anyways, um, so if your, thing, if your thing doesn't work, then they're terrible clients because they need it to work and they're going to like hold you to the, to the test. Right. So, so if you're, if you're telling them it works and it's not going to really work for them, then that's, that's a, a real challenge. But the truth is, is if your thing really works and you can provide a result, then they are fantastic clients because they'll take action because they're desperate and they have to, right. That most people don't get them as clients because they can't figure out how to get the money. Um, because these people are, 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 like very, uh, it's one of two things. Either they can't get the money because they can't figure out how to do it or um, they, uh, they, they're not sure their thing will work. So they feel guilty about taking their money. If you're, but if you, you know, if you think about it, if your thing's like the cure to cancer for these guys, you will, you will sell it like crazy, right? So, um, the, so sorting versus selling is when you have so many leads coming in 
like, like we, we had an agency client that we were running this for that what we were doing, we were getting 60 appointments a day for this client. And when you have 60 appointments a day, you are choosing who you want to work with, not the other way around. Right. Um, and it's the same thing here. It's like volume allows you to grow your business by only working with the 10% over here and the 10% over here. And you still make lots and lots and lots of money. You make plenty of money. But the only way that works is if you're paying, you know, 35 or $50 an appointment instead of $350 an appointment, right? That's, that's the, the key. It allows you um, uh, to cherry pick your, your, your thing and pick the people that are perfect fits. Now, um, <laughs> what's interesting about that is there's two things. One is does it make your thing stronger or weaker? It makes it stronger because the people who do buy because you're cherry picking are going to get results. And because you're, you're cherry picking the people who are more likely to do the work, you're, they're actually going to get results. They're going to succeed. And, and your, your proof of your thing working just gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So that's a, a like a self-fulfilling virtuous cycle that happens as you are sorting and cherry picking the people who you know your thing will help the, be the most and, and the best and all that sort of thing, right? The other thing that happens is over time, more of the comfortable people in the middle will seek you out and find you at their own pace. And, and you take them begrudgingly and you let them know, hey, here's how this is going to go and take them on. But, but like, uh, and there's a story about that I can tell you another time. I know this is getting long, but um, but the idea is is like when you set the rules, when when you are the one that they are seeking out, it changes the balance of power, right? It changes the game because you don't need any sale, you don't need any client. It 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 changes it so that they are not the prize anymore. You're the prize. And, and you say, well, everybody says that, you know, uh, you know, everybody has all these things they say about that. But the ultimate answer to that is to have more leads than you can call. If you have more leads than you can call, you truly are the prize. You're the person who becomes the, the, the prize because you're only going to work with so many people, right? And so that's, that's kind of the thing. So, so in, our, in our business, the, the whole, the, like we always – think of sorting instead of selling. I don't ever like try to sell somebody on working with us because as a matter of fact, I many, many, many times um, uh, dissuade people from working with us because they're not going to work the way that we want to work. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a guy last month who um, uh, we had had a conversation back in, in March and uh, they had an event in May and they wanted us to run this, uh, this traffic model that we have for filling events. And, uh, and I had one call with him in March. He's a famous, pretty famous guy. And uh, in this, in this space. And, um, and I told him, you know, okay, yeah, we can do it. Here's the price. And, you know, here's all the prep work we need in advance and what we're going to need time wise and all this sort of stuff. And didn't hear back and I didn't chase him or have another call or, or even message him. I was, I figured they moved on. Um, and then, uh, out of the blue, they messaged us like, you know, at the, at the 11th hour wanting us to do it. And, um, and I told them that we couldn't. And the reason why is there were two reasons. One is because, um, you know, they, if, if they weren't willing to pay us and give us enough time to do the work, then, you know, what kind of client, if they wanted to, if they needed or wanted to hold on to their money to till the 11th hour and not give us time to prep because, because their answer was, Oh, we can be ready very quickly. And I'm like, yeah, but we can't. And that's, that's how it works for us is we can't drop the work we're doing. That's already on our, our queue just because you want to pay us, you know, it was a lot of money. It was five figures, um, you know, to do it and, uh, and mid five figures. And uh, 
but ultimately, um, you know, I didn't want to, it sets a bad precedent to take a client just for the money, which would have been the only reason we would have been taking them at that point. And, uh, and so, uh, there's a power in that. Now that guy might not like me. I don't really give two hoots about that. Um, because, you know, ultimately I was very clear from the start about how it would work and, and how it needed to work. And, you know, they just didn't want to pay, which is always the case, right? When, when it is what it is, uh, they didn't want to pay or, or at least they wanted to hold their money till the, till the last possible second that they could pay us to get started. And, um, and that's, you know, that's not a, to me, that's not a five-star prospect. That's not a client that I want to work with. Because if they're that way about one thing, there's all these other hidden things that we're going to have problems with, you know. And so luckily, uh, thankfully, you know, we have plenty of leads coming in and don't have to uh, take a client just because they have the money. And that is the power of, of sorting versus selling is being able to make those decisions that are better for your business. So hope this helped. And if you if you want, uh, the, the, the purpose of this video, uh, obviously is to talk about this concept, but also is if you are thinking about getting the introvert selling system, there should be a link if this is an ad, or if you're on the page, just keep, keep scrolling down and looking at the different stuff. But, but it, uh, it is the thing that allows us to have more leads than we can work with in our, you know, multiple of the businesses that I own. Um, and, uh, the agency being one of them. And so, um, uh, so if you're looking it again, it's not for selling, it, I guess you could sell products. I haven't really tried it, but, but, but it's for selling something that you're selling on the phone. So if you sell your stuff on the phone with an appointment, like it's something that's like three K to 30 K, then this is, this is the way it's, uh, it's the future. And, um, so, uh, you know, jump on board. Talk to you soon.